And away we go. It is the nightcap brought to you. You're muted. Huh. How about that? Go to the app. <laughs> www.galacticfriedchicken.com and they will uh, get you taken care of. They will deliver right to your front door pretty much anywhere inside the 275 loop or Wednesday through Sunday, lunch and dinner. Make it down to Dayton, Kentucky. Tell them to pump it up. Save yourself 75%. 75? Right. Or 15, sorry. 75, Good. my bad. Goodness. Jeez. I, um, it's been a long day. I didn't sleep much last night. How about you? Nope. I'm tired. But that's all right. 15%, not 75. Don't tell Shane I said 75. Ever. Ever. It was 15. If he's listening to this, that wasn't the uh, <laughs> the reading that you're looking for. We'll, we'll, we'll be better tomorrow. Um, <laughs> so, ton of uh, Bearcats-related content, obviously, over the past... Uh, 20 hours or so, and, and that will still be uh, continuing through tonight and tomorrow. But this is the space where we talk about what else happened in the Big 12 this week outside of Cincinnati's 27-21 victory over Pitt, which maybe the second best win in the conference yesterday? Um. I think that's probably fair to say. I won't give it first. I mean, no. no. You go into Alabama and beat Alabama, you probably get first. But uh yeah, it's uh let, let's uh let's let's kick it off, Aaron. Proctor uh game started uh Friday. Friday as Kansas pretty much handled Illinois fairly easy, 34 34- to 23 illinois did try to to get back into it late but it didn't work um boy jalen daniels when kansas has jalen daniels that is a fun team to watch yeah jalen daniels ends up 21 of 29 277 yards two touchdowns and a pick um you could argue that he was the best player on the field but right behind him devin neal and daniel hishaw is it hishaw hishaw jr uh uh, Neil had 120 yards on 10 carries and a, and a touchdown. Uh, Daniel Hishaw Jr. had 12 carries, 98 yards and a touchdown. Offense is, is definitely not an issue for these Kansas Jayhawks. No, you do wonder a little bit, and, you know, this is something similar that Cincinnati fans were wondering yesterday. Like, you only go, score six points in the second half um, with those type of, of, you know, offensive numbers spread across multiple guys. Makes you wonder a little bit, but you're up pretty comfortably. So, um, it's also a hat tip to Illinois making some adjustments. Yeah, it's what we talked about. Same with with Pitt. Correct. But Kansas at two and zero with Jalen Daniels on the field. I mean, mm -hmm. with, yeah, it was his first game back. Yeah, he didn't play in week in week one, so um, that's definitely interesting. And then. You know, you you start to look around and you, and you wonder, man, is is Kansas one of the better teams in this league? Like, potentially, it might be. Potentially, yeah, they very much might be. Um, I guess these are the last time they arranged them by when they were played, but now they're arranged by ranking. So I guess we'll go strictly by ranking. What what's happening there? Is there something falling on your head? I don't know. I think somebody went <laughs> run, run into the door. I, you were like. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, I'm in the basement with noise-canceling headphones on. I'm never sure what's happening upstairs. Let's be all the way real. Uh, obviously, the biggest <laughs> game in college football yesterday was Texas 34-24 at Alabama. Quinn Ewers looks fantastic, 349 yards and, and three touchdowns. I think it's time uh, to officially say Texas is back. I said yeah. I would give them their flowers when it actually happened. I said I'd believe in Quinn Ewers if they could pull off the, the upset on Alabama. And when you go 350 yards on 24 of 38 for three touchdowns, that's a big day. 
That's a big day on a big stage at Alabama. He, uh, he gets his flowers. He gets all of his flowers. Yes. Yes. So, uh, Texas I mean, is really, good, they're complete. They've got a really good team. And, and, I mean, I guess here's the thing, right? What we're seeing with, with Alabama right now, they don't have the elite quarterback. And, and when you have the elite quarterback, everything else looks a little better. Sure. Defense looks a little better because the quarterback can go, you know, if you if you have a, a bad series or whatever, quarterback can go save you. Receivers look better. Run game looks a little better. Like everything looks better when you have that great quarterback. Bama's had a stretch where they were really, really good, elite at the college level uh, at quarterback. And that doesn't look like it's the case right now. Yeah, no, I'd agree. Uh, Texas does make the jump, though, from 11 to 4 in the nation. Uh, quite a leap. But when you take out number three, that's that's what happens. At their place. Correct. When you take out number three at their place, you uh, you make a big jump. Um, it looked like Utah was 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 going to go down. It looked like Baylor was, was going to win a, a rock fight. And then the Utes score 14 in the fourth quarter. They come back and beat Baylor 20 to 13 uh, in Waco. That's you worry. I know it's early and it was a great showing by Baylor given how rough they looked in week one. Correct. To bounce back and look that good against Utah in week two. And then you can't get across the finish line. Like I know it's early and there's plenty of time for them to get back on track, but that's a, that's a shot. To your to your confidence, Utah doing it without Cam Rising. Utah yeah. doing it uh, with not one but two quarterbacks, and it, I mean that's two weeks in a row now they've done it with two quarterbacks. So I'm not really sure what Utah's got going on, but it's it's working. Um, I think Utah is is that their second Big Twelve game in a row? No, they played Florida last week. They played Florida, um, yeah. So they won. They beat the SEC in the Big Twelve in the first two weeks. Yeah, I, I think Florida's gonna they're making a name for themselves and they've been doing it steadily for the last couple of years. Uh, they're, they're going to fit in, I think quite nicely in this conference come next year. Uh, I, I think mean, let's be honest with ourselves. They might slot in at the top with the little spurt that they've been on the past couple of years, because what have we seen with big 12 teams? You're up a year, you dip a little yeah. bit, you're up a year. Like Utah has been pretty consistent over the past three, four years. I, I think that they are automatically slotting themselves in at the top half, and we'll see what maybe the top third. It's hard to say with with the transfer portal and with whatever else goes on. Who knows? Yeah, but, I'm, but what I'm saying is they've consistently done it when a lot of these programs have yeah. been up a year and then down and then up and then like it's been a little bit more of a roller coaster. Yeah, where Utah's they, they've been pretty good, man. They've got a lot of respect right now, and it's well well deserved and certainly yeah. earned. Tough for Baylor. You 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 grind it out. You get yourself to the fourth quarter with that thirteen to six lead, and you go down twenty to thirteen. Um, Dave Dave Aranda's got to be a little nervous. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, and then if you're Texas Tech, very similar. Look like they, you know, were gonna go in the, or, or not go in. It was at Texas Tech, but looked like they were gonna gonna snip Oregon, and then ooh, bad beat of the week. Did you see this one? I did not. I was driving. So um, Oregon kicks a field goal to go up 31-30 and then pick six. And I think the spread was either six and a half or seven. I think it was six and a half. And instead of losing 31-30, they lost 38-30. And mm. uh, right at the horn, like right at the the wire. So that was a kick in the pills to anyone that had that. But Texas Tech 0-2, they did not look good in week one. They looked better against a really good Oregon team in, in week two. But sitting at 0-2. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I mean, you have a quarterback in Tyler Show who 24-38, 282, three touchdowns, but also three picks. Throwing three picks, it's really hard to win a game when you're throwing three interceptions. That's that's tough. 
and Bo Nix has been really good all season long. He, uh, another one that ends up with over 350 yards, finishing 359 and two touchdowns on the day. Yeah. Is what it is. Oregon's, Oregon's rolling right now. Yeah. Um, Kansas State, 42 to 13. That was a close one into the second half. And then, uh, you know, Troy's really good. And Kansas State was able to pull away from them comfortably in the second half. Again, I contend that they are, I'll concede that Texas is uh, that number one spot right now in the Big 12. I don't think Kansas State is all that far behind. They're, they're really good. No, and I think Will Howard's making a name for himself as far as putting himself into the Big 12 Offense Player of the Year conversation. He finishes Quinn, the day with 200. Quinn Ewers and Jalen Daniels would like a word. But, yeah, he's he's playing great. 250 yards in the air, three touchdowns in the air, 33 yards on the ground, two touchdowns on the ground for Will Howard. Well done, sir. Oklahoma, this one is interesting, Aaron. This one is interesting. This game was 14 to 11 in the fourth quarter. It's Oklahoma leading scores. SMU. Such a weird well, score. They they took hit got a two point conversion. It would have been 10, but they, they went for two. And 14 to 11, then Oklahoma scores, gets a three and out, and scores again. Uh the final is 28 to 11. But that that wasn't a convincing looking Oklahoma. No, I. It certainly wasn't seventy three to nothing or whatever it was the the week prior. Yeah. Um, granted, Dylan Gabriel did have four touchdowns, but it was on nineteen of twenty seven for one hundred and seventy six yards on the day. It wasn't anything to. Four touchdowns is something to write home about, but I don't know that the one hundred and seventy six yards is, especially when you're throwing it. Right. Com- completing almost twenty passes for one hundred and seventy six yards, it's not not great. No. Um. I don't know. I mean, the biggest news out of Oklahoma had really nothing to do with the game itself, but more to do with the OC's dad showing up to the game. No, showing up on the field. Like, I don't think they had a problem with him coming to the games. Being in the, yeah, being in the stands, you can be conspicuous. Like, yeah. there's, you can just blend in with the crowd. But being on the sidelines, I mean, you've been to plenty of games on the sidelines. I've been to plenty of games on the sidelines at this point. You don't just show up, right? No. Like you don't, you don't just get on the sideline. You have to go through proper checks and someone has to let you in to be on the sideline. And if you're Art Bryles, you should be nowhere near a college football sideline for the rest of your life. Right. And apparently there, there were supposed to be checks and balances in place to make sure this didn't happen. There clearly weren't. It happened. Or, or somebody was looking in the other way and then didn't expect Anybody to recognize Art Bryles on the sideline? I don't know. Man. I don't know. <laughs> but when we're talking about potentially what we're looking at here in, you know, 13 days. Give me all the distractions that you can for well, Oklahoma. And also, just on the field, that was not a Oklahoma team that looked like a world beater. I'm, I'm okay with... And it, and it was against SMU. SMU. Right. New a- ACC edition SMU. <laughs> little sprinkle, sprinkle, drip, drip of that nip magic when Let's Oklahoma go. comes in. I mean, you know, I somebody I, I think there was somebody on this network that might have picked since Snyder to win that game, but I can't remember who. Uh <laughs> moving right along. BYU Southern Utah 41-16. Southern Utah is bad, but you have to at least feel a little bit better about BYU after that 14 nothing kind of sleeper from week one. I think that's probably the biggest storyline out of this game. I'm not going to make anything else of it. I don't even need to read any of the stats for this game. It's BYU beating a team that they're supposed to beat and looking like a team that should be somebody that you have to go in respecting the hell out of if you're going to Provo six days after hosting Oklahoma. Iowa 20, Iowa State 13. Giving up 20 to Iowa is like giving up 45 to anybody else. <laughs> um I don't I don't I think the the shine is off the Matt Campbell tree. It's not looking great for him, no. 
it's interesting what they'll deal with there because they were so bad for so long. Like, is seven and five for that place just something they're totally cool with? Because I don't know if you're Matt Campbell, like, how many, how, you're not the hot name anymore if you wanted to get out. I don't know if you're if you're seven and five this year though, given all the losses that you had right before the season started, I, I think that you probably yeah. pulled a rabbit out of a hat. That's fair. Uh West Virginia 56 17 over Duquesne. Uh the ears are one and one. They that gets interesting next week as they the backyard brawl it. I agree. And I, I think it's funny that. Pittsburgh was the fans anyway. I won't say anything for Pat Narduzzi and his staff, but, but I think it's funny that the, the fans had already looked past Cincinnati and were looking at West Virginia. And uh, they should have really learned go, that lesson. Didn't really go according to plan there. Lost what four of the last five against the Bearcats? I um, I don't I don't know that we're gonna see any out of conference games against Pittsburgh anytime soon. Let's put it they still way. have to come here. Oh I, after this contract. after that, yeah. Unless yeah. they, unless they're just like, all right, we're, we're buying that out. We're not, uh, oh. we're not coming to your place. Or unless the ACC dissolves and the ACC finds its, or and, and Pitt finds itself looking yeah. for a new home. Um, but yeah, not much to take from West Virginia and Duquesne. Uh, this is the interesting one of the weekend to me. Boise State only scores eighteen points. Sixteen. A, or UCF only scores eighteen points against there you Boise. Go. Um, they need a 55 yard field goal as time expires to win 18 to 16. That's Not great. Not great. And I don't know. I did, did Plumley get injured at the end of that game as well? Is that uh, something he, he that slid happened? weird, I think, or like it might have hyperextended a knee or did something funky, it looked like at the end. So you hope he's healthy, um, just for general purposes. But uh, yeah, I, look, UCF. I don't know. The, you never know what to expect with Gus Malzahn and UCF, right? At this point, yeah. Some weeks they're incredible. Other weeks they look like dog poo. Especially with John Rice Plumley, I feel like he's very much a roller coaster of a quarterback. Some weeks he is good. Some weeks he loses his job to somebody else. So. I don't know what to make of this team yet this far this season and uh, UCF. You probably never will uh, they, because they I, seem to be a different team every week, like a different team sh shows up every week. It's a strange thing they have going on down in Orlando. Uh, how about this one? Rice 43, Houston 41. At one I point, it was 28 nothing Rice. Houston storms back, ties it up at 28, gets it to overtime. Rice wins in double overtime. I don't know if there's enough Red Bull vodkas to cool down the hot seat that is under Houston's coach. I mean, but the, the thing is, like, we, we don't know. Like, he's best friends with the billionaire. Like, you can't lose to Rice. I, did you? I, yeah, I agree. You wouldn't so think so. If it's me, and there, there are tens of Houston fans – they're probably getting very upset and losing patience and wondering. Remember, they fired the guy before him because eight wins wasn't acceptable. Yeah, well, eight wins would be a miracle this season, by my estimation. Yeah, but I, I can't. I can't feel like Dana Holgerson's feeling very comfortable about his job right now. You wouldn't think TCU gets back on track 41 to six over Nichols. Not really much to touch on there. Um, and they then finally, yeah. uh, Oklahoma State 27, Arizona State 15. The late one. Um, the late, like, yeah. 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 Dave mentioned he was up until 2 a.m. watching that game. Um, he was in the chat last night when, when you were driving home. Yeah, like when we when Keegan and I were live, you and Dave were in the chat. Dave's a crazy person. I was yes. I was sober and driving. Now Dave was neither of those things. Um, <laughs> that he said, created and watching football. That said, Arizona State and Oklahoma State. That's another Big Twelve matchup. Um, future Big Twelve matchup uh, as of next season. Uh, 
Oklahoma State's looking good so far. They, they, they he's a man. He's, he's 58, I think we, we said, yeah, right? Something like that. He's, yeah, he's up there. Uh, Gunner Gundy gets in this one. Uh, five of seven for 32 yards and a touchdown. Uh, good on him. But yeah, Gundy's doing what we've come to expect at this point of, of Gundy. Yeah. There you go. That's uh, the Big 12, week two. Certainly already interesting. Certainly from a Bearcats perspective, really, really interesting already. Final week of the out of conference schedule is uh, Saturday. Nip at night, and then it uh, it gets real, real fast. So, excited. It's going to wrap it up. See you tomorrow night for the BBP. This is the Nightcap, brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken, right here on BearcatJournal.com. See ya!